Hi there, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Tip of the Week. So this week, we're continuing along talking about the traditional frame-by-frame -frame process, um, doing everything digitally. And uh, this week, we're going to talk about color. So um, depending on whether you're doing your lines in color or whether you're doing your lines in black and white, if you're doing your lines in color, you may just want to draw them in color as you go in the first place. Um, but if not, then you can always go and recolor them later. When it comes to color, I usually recommend that you don't use this default palette. Go ahead and create your own palette. And to do that, you're just going to click on this button at the top, which is Show Palette List. And then when you show the palette list, you can click on the plus sign and add a new palette. So let's call this character. So you would put your character's name in here. And the reason to create your own color palette is that you may want to separate out the color palette for each individual character um, in each background element in case you want to do some special effects or something on that. So for example, if I need to make a uh, clone of this palette so that I can do something else with it, then I may just want to have a different version of this um, character that I can go back to later. So let's say in the case of if I want to keep my lines black, then I'm good to go. So I just need to do the stuff for the fill. But let's say as a, as a hard case, because the harder case is to do with color, then you may want to create your lines in color. So you can add color pots at the bottom by clicking on the plus sign, um, and then it will pop open this color picker, which will allow you to pick the color that you want to assign there. So um, if you do have a, um, uh, an image that has some colors in it that you want to color pick off of, you can use this color picker right here. If you import the image into your Harmony file, then you can use this color picker and it will color pick anywhere off the inside of the Harmony interface. Now, I'm actually not, I don't have a color model ready for this character, so I'm just going to kind of do it on my own. And I like to use the value slider, which has the, um, the value on the top and the color on the bottom, because I'm just kind of used to how that one looks, and I think it's pretty easy to work with. So the other thing to keep in mind is that you can name your color right away. So let's call this hair uh, lines. And then without even closing this color picker, I can hit a plus, and that's going to create a new pot that I can make it maybe a little bit lighter and then call this hair fill. And so thinking about the sorts of things that I'm going to want to, to color in, Maybe I want to have my eyebrows a darker color than the hair. And the reason that I'm labeling these things by what they are instead of the RGB is that I might want to go back later and change the actual RGB value. After I paint things in, I may decide that I didn't like the color that I chose. And so I'll show you how we can go back and do that later. So keeping in mind that we're just kind of the moment throwing some things in there, then I can call this the skin uh, lines and maybe I'll have that one be a little bit darker and then I can have the skin color have that be kind of a, a lighter desaturated and I'll adjust the color later and then um, I'm gonna have his eyes um, lines. Let's say if I'm going to give them blue eyes, I'll give them some dark lines. Let's call this eye fill. Make that a lighter blue. I do like to use a separate black for the pupil color. And the reason for this is because if you want to go back and do some changes on lines that you've drawn in your default color, you don't want to reuse that. You want to use a new one. So let's just still create a black, but we'll call this one pupil. And then I can have as many color pots as I want by the way that you use the same RGB value. Um, so if I want to have a black for pupil and I want to have a black for, um, you know, lines, I can have those be two separate color pots. And then I'm going to need some eye highlights here. Which is going to be not quite white. And um, I may, I'm, I'm going to do the shadows on the skin and, and whatnot separately using an effect. So I'm not going to do a darker version. Um, I, this, the last thing I need is I have some clothes. 
So let's give him a shirt color. I'm just going to stick that kind of green for now, and I can always change it later. And then I'll give him a collar of a slightly different color. Maybe it's going to be kind of yellow, like so. So now that I've got my colors all ready, oh wait, I need to have um, versions of that for the lines, right? Because I'm doing my lines as a separate color. So let's call this shirt lines. And, um, and then uh, I'll add, I'll click on this one, hit the plus sign, and make it a little bit darker. And let's call that collar lines. Let's see how that like how that works. Okay. If I need to reorder these, I can just you know drag them to reorder them there. And there's some different views that you can use here as well. You can go to swatch mode if swatch mode is easier for you. So I just right clicked in this area to turn swatch mode on. Um, I usually use swatch mode only kind of after I have the colors set up because it's a little bit easier to select the colors in here. So hairlines. Now when I want to paint just the lines, I'm going to use this repaint option. And, excuse me, what happens with repaint is when you drag over a line, it just paints that line in that color. So as I paint the hair, it's very easy for me just to paint those in, especially when you draw digitally because the lines are all separate. So it's super easy. And I can paint my eyebrows. And then I'll keep that eyelid with the default line. And skin lines, I'll paint the skin lines there for the nose and the, and I may decide that that's too light, right? So if I've drawn that and I think, geez, that's too light, then I can go in there and I can just double click on the color, on the actual color swatch, and I can make it darker. So that's how easy it is. Now you see in this case where I've got, this is actually one whole long line there. What I can do is I can go in my paintbrush, and in the tool properties of my paintbrush, there's an option in the paintbrush that says repaint brush. And if I click that on, then I can actually just paint over a section of a line. So I can just paint over that section there, and then I can isolate that guy out. So I can very easily get in here and kind of like get that color going, like so. So I may want to do the same thing with the collar lines. So I'm going to paint the collar lines kind of in there in about the right spot. And over here. Like so. Skin lines, I can go a little bit back over there. I don't have to do it perfect, of course. I'm just getting a little nitpicky now. And uh, I painted that with the wrong color. So let's undo that, grab the collar lines. Paint that in, and then I've got the shirt lines on the outside. All right, and lastly, I've got some skin lines on the ear, and then I've got the eye lines for the eyes there. So that's it for the lines. Now, um, at this point, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in there, and I'm going to paint um, the, the fill-in. But before I do that, I'm just going to go ahead and do this on all my drawings. Okay, so now that I've got all my lines colored in, I'm ready to go in and do the fill. Um, in Harmony, there is a way to extract the fill and put the fill on a separate layer, but I don't really see there as being a need to do this in most scenarios, and I find it a little bit easier to do it just on the same layer. I do, however, like to turn on K. Now, um, this is view, show, and show strokes, and has a shortcut of K. So when I turn on show strokes, it allows me to see where there are unconnected lines. So obviously these lines are unconnected because they're really not supposed to be. But areas like this where I've really got a huge gap, I may want to go in and fill them manually using the closed gap or the stroke tool. The difference is the stroke, the closed gap tool, even if I draw a crazy line in between the two, it's always going to make a straight line in between the two points. Whereas the stroke tool will just preserve whatever line I draw. So I usually like to use the stroke tool when I want to give a shape to that line so that I can make it look kind of nice. 
And then you do need to have some kind of a stroke at the bottom of your drawing so that it will fill in um, the bottom. Um, if, it, if there's a gap, it won't fill that in. So you really do need to make sure that you've done that. So um, I'll just go in here and fill in those areas where I've got the hair so that I can close the hair up properly. And the other thing you may want to do is if you're working Japanese style, you may want to have a white of the eye. And if you do want to have a white of the eye, then you might have to draw that stroke in there as well. See here, I can tell at a glance that these lines are not connected because they have a little yellow dot there. So I'm going to just use my closed gap tool and connect those dots in. You also do have the ability to turn um, the closed gap, the automatic closed gap on your paint bucket so that you can do it that way as well. So now that I have all the regions closed off properly, I can come in here and I'm going to make use of a tool called Paint Unpainted. And what Paint Unpainted does is it allows you to just quickly lay in areas by doing a drag and then it only paints the regions that don't yet have a color assigned. So even if I drag over the lines here, it's not going to paint the lines, it's just going to paint the fill inside. Now if I do something like this and I see the paint bleeding into other areas, it's because I haven't yet closed something off all the way. And this is where it becomes handy to learn about overridable shortcuts. So if you go in your preferences and you check out the shortcuts area there, if you go under drawing mode, this is where you'll see all the tools. And then the tool that I want to override a lot is the closed gap tool. And this one has a shortcut for C, or it's Alt C. But you see here it says overridable. What this overridable means is that if it's set to Alt C or Option C permanently, it will permanently switch that tool. But if I just hold down C, it's going to only select that tool temporarily. So it's going to be easy for me to super quickly go in here and just close those areas where I think there might be gaps. Um, in order to give me that fill that I want. So now I can go back, to, so without even have to do anything, I'm already back in my closed gap tool, and I can go in there and just address those little regions and stuff that I, that I left. So it makes it pretty quick to go in and fill things in. I usually like to just fill in um, the area of similar, or the regions of the similar color all at once, um, so that I can go in later um, and do the rest of it. And if you want to turn on the closed gap, it's down here, so you can close a small gap and see if that helps you um, to, to get things filled in if you're trying to fill them in. Okay, so next thing I'll do is I'll go in and fill in some of the other large areas like the collar and um, just make sure that I close up some of those gaps that may be causing that bleed a little bit. I always like to fill in the larger areas first and then I can go in and fill the smaller areas. So like the eye fill in here and uh, the hair I usually leave for last because there's a whole lot of stuff there. So I'll just fill everything in with the hair once I'm done. And then I also want to have a color for the eye white because I added that in there. So let's call this eye white. And then I can kind of click on the outside and let's make this not quite totally white. And here, if there's a situation where I've already, or I forgot to draw the stroke on there for the eye white, I can always draw the stroke in later. And then I won't be able to use paint unpainted, but I can still use the regular paint and paint that in. Okay, so now that I've got everything except for the hair done, there's a really easy way for me to do the hair. Um, there is a tool that's called Apply to All Drawings. So if I just take my hair fill color and I turn on Apply to Multiple Drawings, I can turn on my onion skin just to make sure that I'm kind of going to drag in a large enough area, and then I'll just drag over top of everything. And now if you see, if we play through that, then it has filled in all of the ones that were totally closed. If there's one that hasn't filled in, 
then most likely it hasn't filled in because there's a gap somewhere. So I see a little gap down here, so I can just close that, and then I can fill that in. And let's check to see if we see where the gap is here. Oh, yes, there's quite a large gap there. There we go. Brilliant. So now I can just check it out, and I'm good to go. So at this point, I can turn off Show Strokes and double check it. And whoops, now I see another problem that I've accidentally filled in the, the hair color. It looks like I missed the eye white there, so I can just fill that back in. Double check to see how that all looks. All right, and then I might want to just go in now and add my pupils and my eye highlights really quick. Sometimes I just do this using the brush tool because um, I can just kind of like knock in an area. If I don't want to accidentally color that brown color, I can always protect that color. And then it won't paint that in, see? And now I can just go in and add my highlights. And if I ever notice anything that I want to change or fix, like maybe I want to kind of paint this hair fill on top of the eye there, and then I can just go in and kind of manually fix it. And now I'm pretty much done. So I'll take a look from a bit further away. There we go. So for a really quick example of an animation um, done with some colored lines, it works pretty well. Um, if you do notice little bits and pieces that you want to go back and fix, then you can always go back and fix those as you go. Um, but so far that's it for the coloring tutorial and then we'll finish up last week by showing you how to add highlights and shadows next time.